Look, that one's got a cute little stripe on its head. Here's a look at the new NECA toys, Gremlins. This is Ultimate Stripe. A gadget salesman is looking for a special gift for his son and finds one at a store in Chinatown. The storekeeper is reluctant to part with the mogwai but sells it to him with a warning to never expose him to bright light, water, or to feed him after midnight. All this happens and the result is a gang of gremlins that decide to tear up the town on Christmas Eve. Before he gets away, let's figure out how tall Stripe stands. Now, you could be of two schools for this. You could either take it to the very top of its ears, which I'm going to do. You could also then go beyond that and measure to the top of his mohawk. Now, technically, the mohawk is adjustable. I'll talk about that in a second. So instead, I'm actually going to go right to the very top of its ears. The figure stands six inches exactly, which in centimeters works out to be. Let me go ahead and do that quickly for you. 15, 15.3 centimeters tall. Now, what kind of reviewer would I be without doing some comparisons? There's the obvious comparison. I'm sure people will want to see the difference between Stripe and Ultimate Gremlin. I'll do some comparisons with the face in a second as well. And then the other comparison will obviously bring in Ultimate Gizmo. Still a figure that unfortunately didn't do better than his predecessor. The original Gizmo, I think, was a far better representation than the one that we got here in the Ultimate. But nonetheless, here are the Ultimate Gremlins. Not specifically Gremlin, the first Gremlins, because Gizmo kind of shares head sculpts for both Gremlins 1 and Gremlins 2. But again, here's the comparisons between the three Ultimate Gremlins. Yes, I know, by the way, somebody is going to say, well, Gizmo technically isn't a Gremlin just yet. He's a Mogwai. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's do some much needed comparisons between these two. I know some people did consider, they often thought, I saw some posts where people were like, they felt as if the head sculpts were gonna be identical between Stripe and a standard uh, Ultimate Gremlin. So I just wanna obviously do the comparisons between the two so that you guys can see. In fact, it is a completely different figure. Well. That's not 100% true. Let me just stop myself by saying that the figure's bodies are identical to one another. In fact, actually, the paint uh, are, is identical to one another. You could simply have just popped the head off, replaced it with this head sculpt, and you would get the exact same figure over here. That would be defeating the purpose completely because you would need both figures to do that anyways. Uh, but the paint, like I said, is identical to one another, mirror copies to one another where the drastic changes are done, if I can show you both of them here, are the head sculpts, the head portraits. Uh, Stripe, actually, when you look at him, he comes across having a little bit more of a snout than the gremlin that's down below. The gremlin, the ultimate gremlin right here, also has a very narrow, longer, but very narrow jawline. Whereas Gizmo, like I said, or Gizmo, Stripe, not only has the protruding jaw, but also it looks like his chin isn't as long as it is longer, if that makes any sense. He does have a shorter chin, it seems, than this one over here. And yes, definitely his jawline is a little bit different. The mouth is fully extended. And even though you could chalk it up also to the fact that his expression is very much different than this one right here, which this one you know, inhibits, exhibits, I should say, more of a smile. This one doesn't really necessarily have a smile. So yes, if he was smiling, he probably would have had a bit of a closer, you know, identical look to it than maybe this one right here. Obviously, one of the big, also the telltale signs that this is Stripe versus a standard gizmo, standard gremlin, I'm going to say gizmo for the rest of this review, is the fact that this one also has the faux hair running down as a strip from the top of its head to about the top of its shoulders. So yes, you can see that they are similar, yes, Identical, though, no. They have different different head sculpts altogether. The ears also uh, seem like they could be the same. So simply, it probably is just this section right here. This section right here that they've swapped out. Didn't mean to scare you there. That they swapped out from one to the other. 
with a budget that cost me about eight cents to accomplish. Here are his accessories after some very streamlined editing and transitioning over later. Well, let's have a look at them. For starters, he does come with his skateboard. Uh, the skateboard actually is a nice little representation of a standard skateboard. Smaller, yes, uh, exhibiting some rather cool translucent red wheels, all of which are spinnable. Um, the way that they are connected in place, though, does leave for a little bit of a loose wheel on really all accounts, both the tops and the bottoms. I guess you could really argue the point that skateboards are kind of like that as well, giving a little bit of suspension. So NECA successfully has recreated even the suspension system, that's a lot of S's, on this skateboard. Uh, nice coloring there on the top, you can see. Well, the undercarriage, but the very top of that. You can see how the wheels would have been bolted in place and like I said, would have had that suspension happening right there as well. You can even see how they've been uh, just screwed into the wood deck. Is this a deck, I believe? Uh, some nice wood grain there on the underside. And of course you've got that kind of sandpaper texturing that they put on top of skateboards so you don't slip. This reviewer has never been successful at skateboarding. Fallen off many a times I have. Don't skateboard nearly as much. Okay, none of all. Not I don't skateboard at all nowadays, but back in the day I certainly was not a skateboarder. I was not a guy that had his own selection of decks. I believe that's as they say. So he does come with a skateboard. You can, in theory, put stripe on top of the skateboard. I mean, this is this is a cheap way to display them. You could do a little bit more. You could put a little bit more oomph into it than what I've just done right now. But it's just to indicate, just to show you, that the Gremlin does stand on the skateboard successfully. Also included, he gets himself the Buzz Saw Blade, a really nice little addition. Um, I did notice that there's this little notch in the side. I suppose it's supposed to be there. There's really no specific place. It's obviously not going to attach here onto the chainsaw. We'll look at that in a second. So he just got this little notch noted on the side. I'm sure there's a realistic uh, like copy to this. If you were to see this in real life, you probably would see that similar notch there as well. So attention to detail is something that NECA seems to always be good at doing. Uh, none of the little gear, none of the disc blades here on the sides are sharp. Um, it is made of a, well, you could gauge it right there, how thick of a plastic that is. I suppose in some ways it would be brittle. In other ways it would just be, well, why are you bending this in the first place? So he does come with that. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, like I say, he doesn't come with a whole lot of accessories. Um, I'm trying to really think to myself what I could possibly have thrown in there that, you know, NECA, NECA hasn't already thought of. My first guess would have certainly been the chainsaw, which obviously was maybe not their first guess. It could have very well been their first guess, but uh, this was also included as well with the figure. Thank goodness it is. It's a really incredible, smaller scaled little notations that would have been on the larger chainsaw. For example, Braddington power cutter, upper and lower hand guards, nighttime tree cutting. Some people, I guess, cut their trees at night. A curb catcher and guard link chain. It's also made in the USA. And then again, like it's got all these little wordings here on the side. You can see how it's been bolted in there in place as well. This, you can kind of rock this and you feel like it rattles a little bit. Again, why would anybody want to do that? People are just crazy. They do silly things sometimes. The chainsaw does feel light. Likely this is all like hollow plastic. Everything on it does feel really relatively light, but I guess really what it needs to be, why would you haunt a substantially heavy chainsaw? It's only gonna burden this figure with additional front weight, causing the figure to topple forward. It does have a little power cable, the power plug on the end, and a little trigger button on the top. Again, a nice little representation of the chainsaw that he has in the film. Like I said, you can get it into its hand. Um, it's a case really more so of prying the fingers away, prying the thumb away as best you can, and just kind of wedge it, there you go, into its hand. It doesn't go anywhere. I mean, you could do the blizzard test. I don't know why you would want to, but uh, he does hold the chainsaw relatively well. The other hand, I suppose, if anything, you could just 
support the chainsaw underneath. I think in the beginning of this review, I sort of just had the hand underneath like so, just to just to support the under area, the under section of the chainsaw. Now again, the only problem with this is when you are putting it into, into his hand, it does cause the figure to be a little front heavy. Um, now you can compensate this by, I used a display stand for the opener of this review. You could do that just to kind of compensate for it. A, small, a smaller stand will not work as effectively as a larger stand, so mileage may vary. But I guess, if, again, if you want to display this guy, ch the chainsaw will add front weight. There's no way around it. I guess you could have the, uh, the arms a little bit higher up. That may also cause a bit of a problem. Um, but again, I love the fact that he does come in clue with the chainsaw. The biggest problem, if anything, has always been sort of the gremlin's legs. The lower hind legs have the angle point forward. So when you are putting, obviously, anything in, in its hands, it's naturally going to fall this way. And unfortunately, the hind legs, the way that they're hinged, are naturally going to bend in a way that that's going to fall forward as well. So you got a bit of, of stuff working against you. Like I said, you sort of can compensate it by bringing the legs back, but uh, the figure is probably going to give you a tough time standing if you put the chainsaw in his hand. I've spent a whole lot of time talking about that. So let's go ahead and get that out of his hand. By the way, also, I want to quickly bring your attention to the fact that if you successfully get the hand gripping the handle of the chainsaw in the right place, the finger actually does hit the trigger. I don't know how successful it's going to be for the fact that it's unplugged, but nonetheless, you will be able to line up the finger with the trigger point, and I think that's a nice little touch. So we'll go ahead and get this out of his hand. Bit of a stubborn thing to get out of his hand. And let's have a look at the figure. Now, when you get this guy out of the box, you may find yourself doing the exact same thing that I'm doing. No, not talking to a camera. You may be talking to a camera, I don't know. You may even just be talking to the refrigerator while you're sculpting and molding the hair. But the hair is pretty flat when you get it out of the packaging. It does involve some tender loving care just to kind of bring those hairs up. As a result of it though, you'll also probably be doing this a lot too. Cleaning off any of the leftover hairs that have wandered off from his scalp and land at any which way, somewhere around the hands, sometimes around the feet. Claws are actually quite notorious for catching these little fibers. So again, you might want to just find yourself doing some house cleaning and just taking off all the extra stuff that's falling as you're fixing off. There you go, fixing off Stripe's hair. Uh, it's pretty much as what you would expect it to be. It's a strip. Everybody has sort of seen these at some point in their life. It's this little strip of faux hair, faux fur, and uh, it doesn't really attach anywhere other than just the head. So as a result, it sort of drapes more like a ponytail than it does as something that would be attached to his neck. Obviously, they would have to have left that barren, unattached, because then if you, if you obviously attached it there, it would cause some resistance when it came to moving the neck. So they opted not to glue it right there. And I certainly can't fault them for leaving that area off. Leaving that off, probably the best thing they could have done. So as a result, you do see a bit of a gap between the, the hair and the neck in which the hair really, in theory, should attach to. I don't think it's supposed to be loose like this in the film. As we've already spent some time already doing the comparisons, but you can certainly go back and go and re-examine the head sculpt once again. Just fantastic sculpting, both on sculpt and coloring this really captures exactly what stripe looks like in the film sort of again a slight departure from the other gremlins the other gremlins more happier he definitely has very much a unique face to him even though he's not smiling like we've already discussed before like the other gremlin uh, his face seems definitely different from the rest of the gremlins that he stands out obviously the big noting factor is the big stripe on the top of his head for obvious reasons they put that on a gremlin so that you would just be able to tell him amongst the pack of them whenever there's a scene in which stripe is with of course the rest of the gremlins uh, his mouth does open and close not as much it seems as the ultimate gremlin I mean, it really is, it does seem very limited with what you can move the mouth to. I keep wanting to pry it. Oh, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. I'm prying it more than I really wanted to because it, it, it did feel like there was resistance to it. 
Obviously, the more you do that as well, the more sectional the bottom of the jaw looks to the rest of the head sculpt. So you may only want to do this so far anyways, for the fact A, that it's giving you resistance, and B, for the fact that now you start seeing a bit of the additional red, it looks actually like his bottom jaw has been cut. So you may want to just, rev just put that back where you left it. Even though the mouth doesn't really open and close too much, from what mouth is open, you can see that they painted in the tongue. The gums are actually a different color than the tongue, I like that. And the teeth are done a very slimy yellow, like little kernels of corn. That's delicious. Uh, equally though to that is all these additional yellow spikes that makes up the sides of his face. Of course, this just crowning jewel of decoration there on the top of its head down the sides of its arms in these glorious stripes and sort of like this kind of patterned effect there on the front. I often at times looking at it, it looks actually like an animal hide that's been pinned up, stretched out if you will, of just glorious coloring here. Even like just the yellow, which I'm sure I've talked about when we looked at the ultimate gremlin, but even like the yellow gets their own fair share of attention the yellow has all this lighter strips of almost like a white color that's been added in there as well, just to give it a brighter area here, and it gets then progressively darker as it goes out. The sculpting, like I said, is just fantastic. I know I'm certain I said this when we had a look at the Ultimate Gremlin, but the back does very much remind me of, of an insect. Uh, like a thorax. I would almost even imagine that this could have split open and these would have came out as wings. Obviously that not be the case. This is just some additional thought process that I'm thinking of, but it's just got this almost arachnid like design, which would be somewhat ironic because Mohawk would have become an arachnid gremlin in the end of Gremlins 2. Oh no, I just gave it away. Love these little spikes that are on the end of its tail. Very much, again, a cockroach sort of insect vibe I'm getting from this. Texturing it basically from head to toe. Paint is head to toe. Even like the undersides of Stripe's feet get their attention as well. They're not just left off. NECA just didn't say, ah, it's the bottom of the feet. Nobody's going to look at that. No, 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 nobody's going to look. I don't know. You think we should really be? Nah, nobody's going to look at the bottom, the undersides of their feet. Yet we still look. We still look on the undersides, fully sculpted, fully painted, and you've got much appreciated peg holes on the undersides of his feet as well. Like I said, there's nothing really I would find fault to this figure. There's just a little like little house cleaning, housekeeping things that you may want to just find yourself doing. Periodically, like I said, you're just going to be wanting to take hairs off of him. Things will be falling off of him. The hairs, as you eventually get to that grooming point where you're happy with what you've done, what you've accomplished... I did that myself. Um, as a result, though, you may have all these extra hairs kind of kicking all over the place, so you may just want to clean that up. Clean up shop before you close for the day. So this guy's articulation, his head rotates back and forth. It hinges up and down. And you can see right away why that shouldn't have been glued in place, so good that they didn't do that. The head rotates back and forth and up and down on the neck. Oh, I just crushed his hair. And we're going to find out, keep doing that. And there goes more, more of the hair. Uh, the ears do have a slight, slight hinge to them. Thank goodness for the fact, by the way, that with these Ultimate figures, they abandoned the idea of putting these trackball eyes, especially on the smaller gremlins. Their head portraits so much smaller than Gizmo. I really don't think trackball eyes would have worked at all for the gremlins. Sort of, they just kind of kept it more so for the Mogwais. Glad they didn't do it here. Uh, the shoulders hinge slightly out. They're a little restricted, I find, on this figure, primarily because of the way these scalings are done on the tops of the shoulders. Uh, the arms move forward. They certainly move back, and you have a bend at the elbow, uh, almost to the point where you could have it touching its own shoulder. That's pretty good. Uh, the arms rotate, or the hands, I should say, rotate all the way around and hinge back and forth. These also don't necessarily, I just want to show you here, don't really swivel. Often at times, I'm always finding myself saying, you know, they swivel back and forth. Yeah, you know what? This one just, this one's stuck. This one does. So even though this one technically does do the exact same thing, I'm just having a real tough time rotating the arms. Like I said, normally I would just ro say rotation in the forearm. 
Um, I guess I could still say it for this figure. Unfortunately, it's just a little stiffer on this one side here. He has the upper torso ball joint. Uh, the lower legs split out like so. They go forward. They go back. That's about as far back as they'll go, unfortunately. He does have the bend at the knee. And then even additionally to that, he does also have the the hind leg hinge. Sort of where the ankle point, even though the ankle technically is there. Sort of like... I don't know what you would describe that as. Certainly, like, most monsters tend to have those hinge joints working the opposite way. And, uh, of course, the stripe here has that as well. Uh, like I said, a great-looking figure. It's a figure long overdue, certainly. I mean, as the fact that we got ourselves the tease, the initial release of the Ultimate Gremlin. I know most collectors, most fans of the Gremlin franchise, always happy with NECA's releases. We're happy with the fact that we got this one, but was so asking also that we got ourselves a stripe. I guess the obvious thing would have been for the fact that we did get ourselves the Ultimate Gremlin. We knew, certainly, at some point, NECA Toys would likely reuse this exact same mold and give us the head portrait. Ah, caught you right there. Give us the head portrait there of Stripe. The end result is a figure that, for most of its merits, are pretty much a carbon copy to this one right here. Of course, the head sculpt is the, the real jewel of this one and the more unique trait that makes this one Stripe over this one right here. And yes, of course, the Mohawk also goes a long way to make him very distinct versus some of the other Gremlins that you have in your collection. Now, for all the good things that Stripe has, and just thrilled for the fact that we finally get ourselves an Ultimate Stripe, there is a few little hiccups that still come with a figure like this. Primarily, all the problem comes down with the bottom legs, from basically the knee down. You've got a hinge joint that works naturally like a knee does, but then you've got that hinge joint that happens just below that, about mid-calf. Because the hinge joint works the opposite way and bends forward instead of bending back, you sort of have that working against you when you want to have the figure displayed, especially with the chainsaw. The chainsaw already makes the figure fall forward, and then when you've got a hinge joint that sort of assists with that, you may find yourself picking up uh, stripe or really any one of the other gremlins for that reasoning because the leg stance can always be a little tricky at times I wish this figure could have come with at the very least a display stand a very wide Footed stand in which putting the figure on top at least would have reduced the number of chances that the figure would fall over Especially if you're going to be displaying it with the chainsaw, which is likely what I'm going to end up doing I'm just going to have to go into my tickle trunk and find a suitable stand to guarantee you that this guy is not going to fall over on me He's got a good number of accessories. I know it's only really three, and I'm still trying to think in the back of my mind, what would I have given him anything more than what NECA has already included for the figure? Maybe eventually down the road we'll get ourselves GameStop exclusives. I think there was a GameStop exclusive with the Ultimate Gremlin, which up to this point I still haven't had a chance to pick up. Maybe they'll do also a similar re-release of this guy with some extra accessories. You never know. Either way, though, still really happy that we finally get ourselves an Ultimate Stripe with all the coloring, the sculpting, and the posability that we would expect now from NECA Toys. We finally get it with the leader of the Gremlins from the first Gremlins film. Good news, though, is if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, Ultimate Stripe should be available now in comic book stores and retail stores as well. So if you guys want to get him, you should be able to find him now and uh, go pick him up. Uh, today, once again, we are having a look at the new NECA toys. This was the Gremlins Ultimate Stripe figure, a fantastic release. You know I'm always a big sucker when it comes to the Gremlins figures, so anytime that NECA is able to release a new one, I'm anxious to pick up that one and add it to my existing collection. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other NECA Gremlins reviews, there's a playlist just for NECA Gremlins. There, I've done enough of them that certainly warrants having a playlist for it. And while you're also at it, if you're new to this channel, don't be shy. You don't have to admit it. But if you are new to this channel and haven't done so already, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below as certainly more videos, more NECA reviews also will be coming soon. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.